The wheat gluten meat that's popular here in the West is seitan. Well, it's a word that's coined by some Japanese dude, but it's basically a meat analog that's made by either washing wheat flour or, you know, by hydrating vital wheat gluten. Seitan was first introduced to the West in the 1960s from Japan, which, if you think about it, really isn't that long ago considering the, you know, the history and evolution of cuisine. By the way, I'll be flashing the references here on the screen just so you know that you know I'm not bamboozling you, okay? So the reason why I say that seitan is a fairly new thing is because the OG wheat gluten meat is actually believed to have originated in ancient China and was used as a meat substitute for adherents of, you know, Buddhism. The earliest documentation of wheat gluten meat was actually in the year 1301 written in an encyclopedia called The Essential Arts for Family Living which mentions you know meat alternatives such as meatless sausage based on uh, wheat gluten or in Mandarin it's called mianjin ah yeah I don't even speak Mandarin so I hope I'm saying that right I failed my family I shall now commit sudoku so there are three main types of wheat gluten meat in Chinese cuisine the first being the standard steamed gluten. Now, I'm not gonna get into the details about this one because, you know, it's very similar to seitan and there are tons of great seitan videos out there. What I'm more interested in talking about are the other two types of gluten meat, you know, the spongy leaven gluten and the deep fried gluten. Spongy gluten is made by leavening raw gluten meat through yeast fermentation, which makes it light and bubbly, and then, you know, it's steamed or baked. This spongy texture gives the meat you know the ability to absorb whatever sauce it's cooked in thus you know giving it a very juicy character this stuff's usually available in any chinese grocery store and you know a very popular dish that uses this as the main ingredient is the shanghai braised wheat gluten with mushrooms which is traditionally eaten as a cold appetizer this dish takes like no time to make so i'll just run you through the process real quick First, add some oil to a hot wok, then fry up a piece of star anise, cashew bark, some ginger, garlic, and the spongy gluten until golden brown. Next, add in some light soy, shouting wine, water, dark soy, sugar, veg stock powder, and the rest of the dried ingredients. Let it simmer with a lid on until all the ingredients are cooked out. You know it's done when all the ingredients are fully hydrated. Plate it up and either chill it in the fridge or enjoy it while it's hot. So I've mentioned that this is a cold appetizer dish, but I'll be a little bit of a rebel and try this out as a hot dish. Mm. So yeah, as a hot dish, this is perfect to go with steamed rice. The meat is really juicy, it's soft, and slightly chewy. It's pretty much like a sponge that has absorbed all the flavors from the rest of the ingredients and the sauce. By the way, I understand that not everyone has access to a Chinese supermarket, so I'll explain to you real quick how to make a simplified version of this wheat gluten. So you're gonna need some vital wheat gluten for this. Add in some yeast, sugar, and water, and mix until well combined. Knead and work it until it's nice and supple. Push it down and level it in a heat safe container, then let it proof until doubled in size. I'm using a wok filled with some hot water to give the dough a warm environment to proof in. Cover with a wet towel and let it do its thing for about an hour and a half. Check to see if it has doubled in size, then steam it over some simmering water for about 45 minutes to one hour. It's done when it's firm to the touch. Be sure to let it chill in the fridge to firm up. Once it's chilled down, cut it into cubes and enjoy. Just a note here that because these are fresh and won't need hydrating, you'll need to adjust the amount of water used in a recipe for the dish. All right, let's talk about the other type of gluten meat, which is deep fried gluten. It's basically made from a very basic raw gluten meat, you know, sometimes with the addition of baking powder to help puff it up. It's formed into small balls and then deep fried into puffy balls. They're usually further cooked in either a sauce or a soup, which makes them, you know, very soft and moist. They can also be used in a dry application, you know, usually served as a crispy shell with some kind of stuffing. Similar to spongy gluten, you can buy this stuff from most Chinese grocery stores and I highly recommend using it in a simple dish called Buddha's Delight, which is commonly eaten by Buddhist vegetarians. To make this dish, you're going to want to prep the fried gluten by poking holes into it. This helps speed up the cooking process by creating more surface area for the gluten to absorb the cooking liquid. 
Next is to put together the ingredients for the sauce. The key flavoring ingredient here is this fermented bean curd. It's got a pungent umami character to it, and if you have an issue finding this stuff, then just sub it with some miso paste. Mix in sugar, MSG, soy sauce, a little bit of water, and mash the bean curd with a fork to dissolve into the sauce. Heat some oil in a wok and fry some ginger. Just FYI, garlic and onions are a huge no-no in Buddhist vegetarian cuisine, so we're not going to be using any of that in this dish. Once the ginger is golden brown, add in carrots, ginkgo nuts, and all the dried ingredients along with the gluten bulbs. Add in the sauce and water. Bring it up to a boil and let it simmer away covered with a lid. Meanwhile, we're going to soak some glass noodles with hot water until soft and then strain out the water. Once all the ingredients are soft and fully hydrated, turn up the heat and add in napa cabbage, snow peas, and the soaked glass noodles. Give it a toss and once the greens are wilted, season with a touch of sesame oil and thicken the sauce with some cornstarch slurry. Give it a good mix and it's done. Plate it up and enjoy. So I pretty much grew up eating this dish at least once every year during Chinese year, so it's really nothing new to me. But I have to say that this is actually my first time making this dish, so let's see how this turned out. Mm. This is such a simple dish. Like the flavors are really clean and simple and you get that slight umami from the fermented bean curd. By the way, just like the leaven gluten meat, if you have issues buying this stuff, then here's how you can actually make it at home. So this gluten dough is pretty much just a mixture of vital wheat gluten, baking powder, and water. You'll need to knead it well, then roll it out into a log and cut it into small pieces. Form them into balls by stretching it into itself to create a sort of smooth surface. This takes a little practice to get it nice and smooth, but you'll get the hang of it by the time you get to the third one. To seal it up, just pinch the seams together and smooth it out a little. Heat up enough oil over a high heat to deep fry the balls in a large wok. The balls are going to expand a lot, so you'll need a big pan for this. To test if the oil is hot enough, you can do the chopstick test. You'll know that the oil is ready when the chopstick is just you know slightly bubbling away. Add in the balls and fry them over low heat. You'll need to constantly flip these guys over so that they cook evenly. A fair bit of warning here though, these guys take a long time to fully cook out, so you'll need a lot of patience here. They're also going to deflate when you stop moving them around, but will puff right back up once you toss them around again. When they're crispy and golden brown, just strain them out onto a rack to cool. So I'm going to admit that this homemade version isn't as perfectly round and poofy as the store-bought version, but I think it's not a big deal since you know it's going to be cooked in a sauce anyways. So what did you think of these ancient mystical Chinese secret ingredients? I hope you learned something new today from this video. I know I certainly learned something new from you know all the research that I had to do for this video. For instance, I learned how to say uh, spongy gluten in Mandarin, which is kao fu. And for deep fried gluten, it's called you mian jing. Did I say that right? No? Okay. <laughs>